It's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Cool. Uh, I thought you didn't use addresses. In this case, maybe I'll give in a little bit so people can find it in their Bible. Then Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is in the book of Proverbs. It's chapter 3, it's verse 5, and verse 6. That's where it is. Now, the interesting thing about that is that you do realize, of course, Jesus did not quote chapter and verse. Jesus said, you have heard it said, or he said, it is written. Why? Well, frankly, folks, the whole idea of chapters, books, and verses, and numbers is a printing reason, not a anointed reason. <laughs> so if you're really a purist and you want to go back to the original, take out the chapters, take out the first numbers. Wouldn't that be a little weird? Maybe. <laughs> There's actually a reason why I bring that up is because there was a Bible college that had English Bibles printed with no chapters, no verses, just text straight through. Oh, where the normal breaks were as far as books were concerned was, of course, like the scrolls, very somewhat obvious. And in places where it was debatable, it was combined. And when read through that way and studied, we came to some different conclusions. <laughs> so don't be surprised if you've gotten a little carried away with your numbers and your chapters and verses. And if you think an address is something that has to be quoted, I don't think so. In Proverbs 3, 5, 6, we like to not lean in our own understanding. That's out of order. That's not in context. Oh, okay, well, let's start in context. We trust in the Lord with all our heart. We lean not in our own understanding. <laughs> so you see, there's a reason why we don't lean in our own understanding is because we trust in the Lord. When you trust in the Lord, you don't have to lean in your own understanding. But if you lean in your own understanding, you're not trusting in the Lord. So guess what? If you think you got it, you might not know because in reality, if you think you know, then you don't got it because what you should have had was to trust in the Lord in the first place. Then you could go back to leaning not in your own understanding because if you are understanding, then guess what? You're probably not trusting in the Lord. Somehow the two work together. Do you see? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> the reality is the joy of the Lord the comfort of God, the anointing of His Holy Spirit is all kind of like all washed up into the reality of just talk to God today, talk with Him each day, walk with Him every day, and you'll find out you're in the way. He is the way, He is the truth, He is the life. And your life will never be the same you walk that way and not the way you think you should go and the Lord said who said it the Lord who's the Lord that's a good question who's your Lord is it the military is it the government is it your wife is it your husband is it the pastor is it the elder? Is it the deacon? Is it the prophet? Is it the religion? Is it the misunderstandings? Is it the understandings? Who is your Lord today? Who is the Lord of your life? Because we use the word a lot, but do you know what it means? Who's making the decisions in your life? Who's decided what you're doing right now today? Did you? Yeah, I? <laughs> I'm not taking responsibility for you. Did you do it? He didn't do it. <laughs> He's too happy. <laughs> so, who's the Lord of your life? You're the Lord? Or is Jesus the Lord of your life? It's a good question. Because you see, 
we can uh, fundamentalize this a little bit, and we can spiritualize this, and we could A.W. Tozer it, and we could get down to the reality of the truth about who really is the Lord of your life. And you know who it is. It isn't Jesus. It's you. You are making the majority of the decisions in your life. You are the one who is making the decision process, making the responsible choices, making the irresponsible decisions, and just going on, sometimes saying, in Jesus' name, to cover me. Because you're just like me. As much as you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, unless you can say right now, God told you to do what you're doing, I question, I really question whether he's Lord. He is Savior, and he may be a good teacher to you, and he may be your salvation, he may be your friend, he may be your God. But be careful when you use the word Lord, because every time the word Lord is used, the next part is going to require your obedience or disobedience. Whenever the word Lord is there, it's going to say, are you doing what it says or not doing? You don't have an option when it's Lord. So be careful. Be very, very careful with the word Lord. I think it means a little bit more than what it seems. I think there might be something to this God thing that says, the Lord God. Ooh, when it's God, we can damn it, we can bless it, we can God this, God that, and God go, and God get, and God grace, and God sits. But when we go, Lord God, maybe add the word Almighty, then all of a sudden, whoosh, are we obedient to the Lord? Or are we in rebellion to the Lord? Watch. Listen. Think about it. When you trust in the Lord, <gasps> it's that word again, the Lord. When you trust in the Lord with all your heart, leaning not in your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledging Him, he directs your path because you're obedient to him. So if you've gone off your tangent, your own way, and you're being Lord, can I make a little suggestion? Maybe it's time to turn the other way from going my way, your way, his way, her way, to that way. Uh-oh. If I go God's way, He might make me do something. He might make me say something. He might make me be something. I don't want to be. So be careful. When you say Lord, make sure you mean it. Because the Lord will ask you about it. Guaranteed. And the Lord said, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith fails not. Hmm. Luke 22, 31-32. Our faith is the center of the target at which God does shoot when he tries us. And if any other grace shall escape untried, certainly faith shall not. God, not Satan, God tries us because he allows Satan to test us, to provoke us, to be that voice, maybe, that, you know, says, hey, you know, you don't got to do what God says, you just got to kind of like, you know, do it in his name, do it for God, become his hands and feet for God, become the process that God has given you wisdom of, of the Holy Spirit so you can do it 
with God, as God, making decisions without asking Him. You don't have to ask Him. You've got God in you. And Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. So you think you got this word down, the understanding of the word Lord. Did you ask him what you're doing right now? No? Oh, you don't have to ask about that. Don't bother God with the little things. He's more interested in the big things. He's the Lord God. So he's only interested in you when there's big problems. He doesn't want to be involved in your everyday, moment-by-moment -moment life. He's not caring so much that you're doing something. Yeah, you know, you can do it yourself. You know, it's okay. You know, you just try it yourself. See if you can do it. And yet, the only sin that really Eve committed was not asking God what his will was. When Satan came and asked her, half God said, all she need do is turn and ask God, what did you say? You see, making Jesus Lord is more than just obeying. It's asking Him and then walking with Him in His way. There is no way of piercing faith to its very marrow like the sticking of the arrow of desertion into it. This finds out whether it be of immortals or whether it be not. Strip it of its armor of conscious enjoyment and the suffer the terrors of the Lord to set themselves in array against it. And that is faith indeed which can escape unhurt from the midst of the attack. Faith must be tried. And seeing desertion is the furnace heated seven times into that which it must be thrust. Bless the man who can endure this ordeal. When you are going through it, you just need to turn to it and ask God about it so that he will take you to, through, and endure it. Because when you have God speaking, you have God filling you with faith to believe. For faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And the word of God proceeds out of the mouth of God. And you should hear it as you ask him for it, so he can tell you what to do about it. Otherwise, it's a name it, claim it. I'm claiming the promises of God. I know what I need to do in this situation. I read my Bible. I got my Bible. My Bible is my God. This is the Lord. My Lord is my Bible. And I'm sorry, but my Bible is the Lord. It's the infallible Lord of God. I mean, Word of God. I mean, the Word of God is Jesus. I mean, you know what I mean. Of course you know what I mean. I mean, you know, we don't want to get this literal God stuff too much. We want to be figurative, symbolic, syllogies. We want to make it a simile, a little uh, metaphor. We want to make it applicable by only spiritual means, which is somehow the Spirit's going to do it for us, and then the Spirit's going to be our God, and He's going to be Lord. So the Lord Spirit will tell us what to do. Come, Lord Spirit, lead us. Hmm. I don't think so. Paul said, I have kept the faith. But he lost his head. They cut that off. But it didn't touch his faith. He rejoiced in three things. The great apostle to the Gentiles, he had fought a good fight. He had finished his course. He had kept the faith. What did all the rest mount to? Paul won the race. He gained the prize. And he has not only the admiration of earth today, but the admiration of heaven. Why do we act as if we as if it paid to lose all to win Christ. Why do we not act as if it paid to lose all to win Christ? Why don't we pay for our Christianity with our life? Why do we think it's all about getting and not giving up our life? Why are we not loyal to the truth as he was? I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Ah, we haven't his arithmetic. We have calculators. He counted differently from us. We count the things gained that he counted loss. I need my man cave. I need my boy toys. I need my men or boys. Boys of God. 
I pray that you become boys of God, that you may go into your cave like Elijah and be sustained by your computer, sustained by your football games, sustained by your toys, and boys will be boys after all. They don't grow up to be men of God. Or do they? May I ask you a question? May I? He's not going to ask that. He's not going to say that. He's not going to go there. Is he? Are you in porno? Do you look at other women? Are you married? Are you in a relationship? Are you lusting? Are you a man? Are you a boy? Are you playing toys? Or are you disciplining yourself? Are you making Jesus Lord? Or are you just hiding the fact that you're just a baby sucking your thumb? Actually, that's pretty good. Maybe I should try that more often. Tastes good. Looks good. It's able to give me wisdom. Matter of fact, I used to do it a lot. Maybe I should go back to sucking my thumb. Keeps my mouth shut so I can't argue. Ew. But there's fingernails. Ew. There's dirt. Yuck. I can't declare the gospel when I'm sucking my thumb. Hmm. Maybe this being a baby Christian isn't so fun after all. Maybe my toys, my Harleys, my latest, greatest, nice new phone, it's smart, because I'm not, but it is. Maybe, hmm, my Starbucks, oh man, five bucks a shot. It's well worth it. Man, forget about that asking, you know, those people that are in Africa. We ought to put, build them a Starbucks so they could go get coffee. We don't need to send them money. We just need to send them economy. Then they could be like American Christians. We got our Starbucks. We got our caves. We got our boy toys. Women have boy toys? Do women lust? He's not going to go there. He's not going to talk about it. He's not going to say it. It's shoes. Wow. Women are into shoes. Gee, I wonder what a Nike on a man is like. Hmm. I wonder what pumps and high heels go for nowadays. I wonder what the latest designer jeans are. I wonder what the latest designer shoes are. I wonder, what would Jesus wear today? Does he care? Satan has desire to sift you, O Christian, like sand. And you are being tried in the ways of the world. Today, as the Holy Spirit speaks to you, recognize where your soul is at and what you're fighting for. Because one day you will stand before Jesus Christ. And Paul and Peter and every other martyr that died before you and gave up their life that others might live will stand in the background, hoping, praying, sharing, wanting you to go to the place that they have been, where you could say you denied yourself, you took up your cross, and you followed Jesus, and you fought the good fight of faith. You have finished the course. You have kept the faith. Lord God, help us. Have we made the faith into something else that Jesus would say? Depart from me. I never knew you. Though you have prophesied in my name, though you have raised the dead, healed the sick, though you have done all these marvelous works, though you have the fruits and look like such a marvelous tree, you worker of iniquity, depart from me. I never knew. God help us to 
today to find the reality? Are you sifted as sand? Is your house being built on sand? Is your faith built on sand? Is your possessions nothing but sand in your hands? Or are you building eternally a kingdom and you have fought the faith? You have fought the good fight. You have kept the faith. You have declared Jesus Christ. And you have walked with him today. Because there's only one thing you need to figure out. There's only one person you need to listen to. And that is not me. I am not your Lord. I am not your convictor. I am not your challenge. But God, help us. But God, bled for us. But God, died for us. But God, lives in us. But God, speaks to us. And God is saying now to us in streams in the desert today, is he Lord? Is Jesus Lord of your life today? May I say to you, trust in the Lord? May I say that one more time? With all your heart, lean not in your own understanding, please, please, or anyone else's understanding. Talk to God about it. Listen to God as he says to you, whatever it is, so you'll trust him, and not me, and not you, and not them, and not her, and not a ministry, and not a church, and not any other thing except the Lord to trust in, as he sends you to all these others, maybe, trust in the Lord with all your heart, be not your own understanding, in all your ways, your man caves, your toys, your boys, your girls, your life, your wife, your marriages, your ministries, your failings, your successes. In all your ways, acknowledge Him in all of it. Don't deny it. Please, please, read Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And let Him direct your path.